You're listening to the Flickcast, the pop culture podcast about stuff nerds love. I am Chris Ulrich, and joining me, my co-host Joe Dilworth. Joe, how are you today? I am well. How are you, sir? I'm doing okay. I uh, it's so funny. We re- we record the pre-show for patrons, um, and then yes. when it's time to transition into the regular episode, I'm like, now I'm worried because now <laughs> this is because just just chatting with you is is a breeze. You're an easy person to talk to, but then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, now let's start the show, and I'm like, oh fuck, now I'm nervous about now. I don't know what to say. I don't now know. I don't know what to say because I, I I and I bumble through the beginning, and now we're just making small talk because we don't know how to start. So anyway, it's just. That's my process. My process is that I'm not great at this, but I try. So I, I find it funny that we talk for like a half hour before the show and then we get right into it and it's like, oh, we, we just we just met this morning or we just uh, started the show. Yes. How have you been? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How are uh, things? Uh, yes. Boy. So we got, we got a lot to talk about today. Um, we do, yes. We've got, uh, of course, uh, new developments in Why the Last Man. Uh, and then, of course... <laughs> Dune came out, so we'll we'll get into that. Uh, and there might be some spoilers, unfortunately, if you haven't seen Dune or you know read a book from nineteen seventy whatever or nineteen sixty eight whenever it came out. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we, unfortunately, there's one thing we probably will touch on just for a minute is the the tragedy that happened on on the set of Rust, that film shooting in New Mexico where the uh, director of photography was killed by yes. a prop weapon. Uh, we I don't know all the details. No one knows all the details. It's still under investigation, but I feel like it just. You know, not to bring the show down at the beginning, but I feel like it brings up the whole idea of safety. It's like safety and working conditions, the thing that's happening that with the with the strike or the potential strike with the union right. and all that stuff. Right. And working conditions are important. Um, just to briefly say that there was an article in the LA Times recently and uh, the last couple of days talking about how the union crew had left the set and they had brought in non-union replacements. And, you know, I've worked both. I've worked non-union and union. And crews for the most part have been great but i will yes. say that that the union crews tend to be more experienced and perhaps more diligent um than the non-union crews who are maybe just haven't been in a position as much or just like have been raised to a new position etc again i don't know what happened nobody knows except the people that were there um yes. it's just unfortunate that that this thing kind of thing happens at all luckily at least some positive thing the director who also got injured uh he's recovered and out of the hospital so that's good so Indeed. And uh, I, I won't. Yeah. The only thing I'll really say on it is having been in a place where something like that happened in very similar circumstances that um, I, I will. The truth will come out. The investigation will get done. They'll find out what happened. And um, hopefully things will happen so that that doesn't there's no more accidents like that. And, you know, we say that every time, but I, I will say first and foremost, my, my thoughts and feelings are for Alec Baldwin and uh, all of the crew on that show, because I certainly know what, uh, I, I do know what they're going through to a certain extent and it's not fun. And so that's, that was kind of my first thought is like, man, I feel really horrible for Alec Baldwin and everyone that was on set that day and especially the you know the people that handled the gun beforehand and all that kind of stuff so um yeah there was a definite breakdown in the system because I mean yeah I I don't know about you but I've on a I've been on a ton of films where there's a fuck ton of guns going on oh yeah and and you know and there's still been some situations where it's like, oh, you know, shit, that didn't go off. That blank didn't go off like it was supposed to. But people rush in, they clear the weapon, they do, you know. Yeah. I've been very lucky to be on sets where everyone is very, very diligent and very, very, you know, or I just, we just thought, you know, we just escaped danger somehow by sheer luck. But I've also been on sets where, you know, there's been explosions and things. And, you know, I've had hair on my arm singed a tiny bit from an explosion that was too big. Yes. <laughs> um, and stuff like that. So it's not like, shit doesn't happen sometimes but luckily it's it's more of a a, a rare occurrence people don't get injured that much right. yep. with the amount of stuff that goes on but yeah I, I mean i feel bad for anyone i feel bad for him but obviously for the for the family of oh yeah of course of helena hutchins yes. as well who who was yeah. tragically killed um, I, I know you meant that too and i know yes. i know but I, but you're talking about the guy who you know who accidentally pulled the trigger or not accidentally but it's like you have to feel bad about that too as a as a human being i would imagine he's not without feelings is not like a robot or something so oh yeah he, no. he must feel he must feel horrible about it uh you would imagine 
So, um, I, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Unfortunately, it, it, the way it looks now is it was just a systematic failure across the board. People trying to save money, producers trying to, you know, maybe cut, cut corners. I mean, who knows? Cause some of the crew yeah. did walk off because of safety conditions and working conditions. And so we don't know, but it just means that especially when there's guns involved or any kind of explosions or effects that are potentially dangerous or stunts are dangerous, that people shouldn't be working 16, 18 hours a day yes. and be exhausted. It's, it's ridiculous. Yes, and so I agree with that. Yes, <laughs> That's why I'm, as a union member, but also as a human being, I 100% supported IA, IATSE in their, in their efforts to get better working conditions Absolutely. For, for people on the set. And so... Um, it's just unfortunate this kind of thing has to happen at all. I, so, although someone pointed out, I, I'm sorry, that that why do we have to make movies about people shooting people? And that's actually an interesting question. But that's a that's probably a topic for another day. But well, I mean, even within that, um, with with uh, computer effects and stuff like that, I don't see. And this has been brought up too. There's no reason in my mind that there needs to be a live gun on a set ever. Well, you know, I why. mean, Blank, blanks are cheaper. That's why. Well, no, I mean you don't even need to have that. You can you can CGI in any gun flashes and stuff. Why no, do you I'm have saying to have blank, a, you know, blanks are cheaper than CG than computer well, effects. They're yes, always going to be but, you can ca- if you can capture it in camera, capture that muzzle flash I in camera. Know. And someone else pointed out, and 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 this is, I mean, again, we don't want to get too much into this, but yeah. I've been on set with lots of different guns before in my life. Lots of them. Full automatics, big, giant 50 caliber guns, whatever. I've worked with a lot of directors who love to you know, blow shit up, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's, I wouldn't say hard, impossible, but it's difficult for an actor to replicate the feeling of having that kind of weapon without it doing anything. If it's just a muzzle flash, it, it looks yeah. fake. I mean, it's obviously fake anyway. So, But if you've got a, a, a machine gun that's, doing blanks the the recoil is is similar to firing live ammo and it's just i think the other thing that people get confused about is that they talk about live rounds the gun is live the gun is uh, right high, you know yes yeah a blank a blank is still a live round right exactly it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it has a bullet which is the front part that actually hits people it doesn't mean it has that it means it's a live round it will boom it will go boom when you pull the trigger yes That's, so the fact that they're the people are saying oh it was a live round it's like yeah it, it was it was a blank Right, exactly. maybe, and again, I don't know what. Well, happened. yeah, just, I don't know. What I'm just in this going case. by yeah. what they say in the paper and yeah, and all that stuff. So I just don't want this to turn into some big political bullshit, which it probably will. And all of a sudden, all these experts on ballistics will come out of the woodwork and and and, and all this. <laughs> well, stuff. But you know what's you know what's already going to happen? Like all the all the all the involuntary manslaughter experts are going to show up now. So well, uh, yeah, I've noticed that there's been a quick mm-hmm. pivot from all the uh, viral experts on the internet are now suddenly. Uh, handgun yeah. experts and gun yeah. safety experts it's like no it's uh, that's why i'm like i i've had some people that are like well what do you think happened i'm like I, I have no idea and i'm gonna let them determine what happened i'm gonna worry more about this you know a family that's been destroyed and yeah. everybody else uh, associated with this who's going to be deeply affected for this for a while i mean i can tell you from personal experience it sticks with you and even if you're not yeah. directly involved um you know, Michael Massey, just to briefly talk about it, Michael Massey from The Crow, he didn't, he just stopped acting for like five years. He's like, I can't do, I can't do this. So, uh, and I'm not saying that he's like the ultimate victim. I'm just saying, uh, I know that Alec Baldwin is affected by it and everybody that witnessed it is affected by it. The families of the victims are affected by it. it it's, it's a lot of people and it's a tragedy and a terrible thing. Um, all we can do is, you know, hopefully not be reactionary about it and do better going forward. Right. So, well, yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately you have to, you know, you got to learn from these things, hopefully and different protocols will be in place, but I feel like there's a lot of safety protocols in place already and they just maybe weren't followed or maybe just. You know, man, you know how it gets on set. Sometimes people are like in a hurry. Oh, yeah. you're, you're you're losing the light, you know, the day is going long, you got to finish the setup, you got to get you got to get done, you know, and especially yep. on a lower budget film where you got 21 days to shoot the entire movie, which apparently is the schedule. Yep. So it's like we got to do this, we got to do that. We got to I mean, you know, corners get cut. And I'm not excusing it. It's just it is what happens. Yep. When there's money when there's money involved and you're trying to finish things and 
you know, the last thing that someone wants to be told when they're trying to make the day is, oh, we got to stop for a safety meeting or whatever. It's like, oh, we don't have time for this. We know we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Yeah. Hurry up. Reload the gun. Hurry up. You know, we got to re like we got to recheck the gun. Reset. Reset. Yeah. Reset. You know, yeah. let's go. But go again. Go again. We got to get this done. So. Right. Right. Everyone's in a fucking hurry and you have maybe less experienced people. Maybe, you know. Yep. Again, I'm just speculating. Yeah. I'm just speculating from 20 years of experience on set with guns. Right, right. You know? Exactly, yes. I, I'm just saying, I wasn't there. And I personally, I do know this, and then we'll move on. I do know there's been one or two occasions where I've stepped in on set and said, no, wait a second. I've personally checked guns before because I didn't feel like right. things were as safe as they could have been. And I will stop the entire fucking production, and I've done that a couple of times. Not, not very many times. And these were armorers or weapons people that I didn't necessarily know before or whatever. So I was very, very cautious with them. And I'd step in and say, you know, let me take a look. I will check every weapon on the set. I'll make sure everything's fine. And then it looked fine. And we, we moved on with the day. And, you know, and the director of that particular show was a good friend. We've known each other for a long time. He's like, yeah, thanks for, you know, yeah. having my back. Because he can't do everything, you know. Because he's also a person who will check stuff. And so, yeah. anyway. That's all. That's it's a tragedy, and that kind of thing shouldn't happen. But you know, hopefully, there'll be something positive that comes out of this, and yes, there'll be some more changes, and it won't happen again. So anyway, um, so all right, so uh, find the Flickcast at the usual places, and also find us on Patreon at Patreon.com/slash/theFlickcast, and then you know, Apple Podcasts is the best place to do a rating or review. Please if do. You, yes. If you'd be so kind, we'd appreciate it. We're still. We're still rated pretty high, so that's nice. Yeah. Maybe they won't. Maybe they won't after this episode. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. not. Maybe not. Yes. Although you know what's funny is the the musical interlude episode did not uh, seem to diminish our stature in any way. In fact, people kind of liked it, from what I hear. So, ah, interesting. Joe, Joe ranting about his hatred of Nirvana was a was an <laughs> interesting. Uh, I don't mean you ranted. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I know. But yeah, it, it was weird because usually you and I are in sync about a lot of stuff, and the fact that you hated Nirvana is weird. Man, we were though. totally not on that. Yes. Yeah, that was weird. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> I, I grant you there are there are bands that from the grunge era that are better than Nirvana. It's just I have a special place for them, I guess, because of they were my first. They were my first, and so anyway. But yeah, I like Soundgarden is much better, and uh, Temple, Temple Pilots, and, and Temple Pilots. Yeah. yeah. So in fact, you talk, we were, before the show we we're talking about bands that are still touring. I think Stone Temple Pilots is still touring, but obviously without Scott Weiland. But uh, I think they're still out there, right? They got a new record out too. Yeah, they got a new singer, singer. so who sounds hardly anything like Wyland, but that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, it's okay. I don't need to. I don't. I mean, I'm another musical aside for a second. I I I listen to a lot of music on Apple Music because that's just we're an Apple ecosystem here at the house. Sure. And so I will grab. I will occasionally open up the app and look at. I'm go. Whoa, they have a new album. Whoa, they're still alive. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I had no idea. So anyway. Like Tears for Fears are coming out with an album. Who knew? They are. I'm and the excited fact that we're calling that. it an album it also should tell you something too. I still call them albums and records, me, and people are too. like, "What the hell are you talking about?" I'm like, oh, "Our new, our new, our new album's dropping." It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, kids. Yeah. You know, back when things were cool, you don't know anything. That's Punk. right. <laughs> I'm gonna play it on my record player. Yes, you, know, you, have to call, I, you have to call I, it. You have to call it a turntable, I guess. But I have a record player. I don't care. I have a record player here on my desk, right next to me. But it also, I got, I. I spent a little bit of money and I got one that's a uh, it's a it's a record player, but it also has radio, uh, CD player, and a cassette player on it. So I can now finally play wow. the, those box of old cassettes that I have. The so. box of singles that you have sitting. Around. Oh, I do. I have. It's funny because I'm one of those that I'm like. I should just get rid of these, but then uh, no, I did. You can't get rid of them. Well, I did the extra step of when I'm like, well, I can't get here. Here's the box of ones that I can't get this particular version of this song anywhere else. Or this is an album that is like by this band that broke up after their first album and it's not on any of the digital platforms. I'm going to keep that cassette. So, yeah. you know. Because, you know, people gave cassettes a bad rap, but they're actually the audio quality of cassettes is decent. Yeah, I mean, not, not but, as good, yeah. not as good as a CD, I suppose. Although a CD is different because of the. Well, anyway, we don't have to get into the technical aspects of CDs, but I think the tape, the cassette tape, is actually a higher fidelity, in my opinion, than I a, think so than a and CD I, in some in some ways. But I grew up with them. I mean, I had the the double uh, cassette deck, a boombox, and would spend, uh, you know, had headphones and would spend hours doing remixes of songs from. Nice. I would have like, like. 
four different cassettes that would have, uh, you know, the single version, the 12 inch version, the album version, all that, and just sit there and make remixes of songs. That was kind of like what my, my, me and my friends did. And we would like, oh, hey, check this out. This is my remix of this song. And we'd trade them and stuff like that. It was kind of fun. Yeah, I don't know if you can do that now, because what are you going to do? Like, if you want to make a tape for a girl, right? You want to make a mixtape. Right, yeah. Here's my favorite song that inspired me about you, girl. Right. I don't know, that's... You just send a playlist. And you can send, here's my, here's my playlist. Go ahead and, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, that's, that's yeah. not as cool. No. I still think physical... I mean, nobody does that probably anymore, but I still think physical media, you can, like, drop this cassette in her locker. That's not stalkery or anything. People, no, no. But uh, I, I think about you when I listen to this song. Yeah. And I memorize yeah. your locker number. <laughs> I memorize it, and I know your combination. It's yeah. Cool, right? that's cool. No, that's weird. I, I, I don't remember if, if uh, my lockers in school had, like, vents, right? So you could slip stuff through them. I don't oh, remember, that's right. I don't, I don't yeah. remember if cassettes would fit, but I know, like, paper and shit would fit. You could, yeah, you could totally put notes in there. Do you like me? Check yes or no. Which is again, yes, no, maybe. Which again is also creepy, slipping notes into lockers, but whatever. It's not that. It's, it's just kid stuff, man. I, I don't know. I, know. I don't think it's that creepy, honestly. <laughs> I, I, it, can, it can be taken to an extreme. Sure, sure. But anything can be, but I think that's still somewhat innocent. Like, you know, school crushes and stuff. I think that's still. Yeah. I, think that's still, I mean, I don't know. I haven't had a school crush in years, obviously, but well, I yeah. think it's still, I think it's still okay. I'm I'm waiting for the first one from from my kid. So it's like just write her a note. He's like, I don't want to write anything. Are you crazy? But yeah, anyway. cassettes were like the perfect thing because you could grab, you could, you know, copy your favorite tracks from a song, make your own greatest hits at you know cassette, or you could do remixes or you know recording. Uh, how how many of us sat there with our finger over the pause button, listen to the radio to capture the the new song, right? So definitely, yeah, absolutely. Did yeah. you uh, can you digitize those? Uh, well, yeah, no, I can with the, this thing that I bought, it's got a USB cable so I can well, there you uh, go. connect can, it to my can, computer. Yeah. I think I'm yeah, going to do that. Yeah. For some reason, the turntable I ended up with also has a USB connection. I didn't really yeah. choose it for that. Um, it was like, I found it on, on Craigslist and I was like, I, I can't spend, I mean, I want to buy this turntable cause it's a thousand dollars or whatever. Cause I'm stupid, yeah. but yeah, yeah. I'll take this one for 50 bucks. And so it actually works <sighs> right. really nice. I, I put a new stylus in it. So it sounds a lot better anyway. This is too, but super nerdy, but, uh, and I, I, I mean, and I, I still have my amp and I have my speakers and stuff and my my subwoofer and all that shit. So, uh, and plus my iPads can, or my iPods connected to it. My iPod. Yeah, I, I will say that I do like now that it's like, oh, I can go to a music service or the band's website and I can get all these you know rare tracks and all this kind of stuff. But I, I do kind of miss the days of going with friends because uh, we lived in a small town and going to Chapel Hill and just going through. It's like, okay, so this record store is like the mainstream store, so we know we can get the new album and some of the remixes here, but then you go find the college uh, stores, and you, it was just a treasure trove of stuff. But it's like, man, I didn't even know the band released this, and you know, and that kind of stuff. And yeah. there's a little bit of that magic is gone today. I mean, I like I said, I'm, I'm happy that all that is more readily available and easier to get, but it was just kind of a fun snapshot of the time and also you know hanging out with friends that had similar music but you always had like the one guy that was off into di different stuff but because he talked so animately about this find it's like well let's listen to that and it's like oh this is pretty good and you discover yeah. you know i don't know it was a fun I think, time I, i'm sure that that still happens i'm sure people swap playlists and whatever but i like the yeah. fact that with with apple and with spotify and all that stuff you can just you know everything seems to be on there and apple yeah is is they have a lot of lossless songs now which i think spotify probably does too but yeah um i don't go on there as much but uh so it, it, the audio fidelity is 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 really good um but you have to have you know you can't like listen to it through bluetooth because it doesn't have the bandwidth and whatever so i have my right. i have my headphones plugged into my digital converter plugged into my computer so i'm i'm you can hear it really good i mean can i tell now in my how old i am maybe i don't hear as well as i used to uh, but uh, yeah but it's amazing, and even with the little earbuds, it's 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 amazing. So I listened to a lot more music. Plus, we got all the little um, uh, Apple Home Pods in all the rooms almost now, so we can say, you know, blah blah blah. Siri, play this, and she'll just play whatever. Right. So right. That's, that's kind of cool. So anyway, this has become an audio podcast. But <laughs> it okay. has. I, yes. I mean, we don't talk about music enough, frankly. I think music has has been a huge influence, and I've always loved, you know turning it over to films a little bit and movies and TV shows. I've always loved music from movies. In fact, I still remember oh, yeah. cues 
to this day. Like, what was I watching the other day? Oh, I was, speaking of Dune, I was watching Dune and I was hearing, well, two things. One, I was hearing the voiceover in my head every time anybody would do anything from David Lynch's Dune. Right. And then secondly, I was hearing, even though even though uh, the soundtrack of this movie is is amazing, I was still hearing some of the music from the original movie but of course, yeah, you always yeah. hear the Star. I always hear the Star Wars music everywhere I go, pretty much. So. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, John yeah, Williams. I've always been big into movie soundtracks. I mean, Star yeah. Wars, obviously, uh, Star Trek: The Motion Picture, yeah. and some others from the time were like some of the first uh, records that I owned. Yeah. Um, Star uh, Wars among, soundtrack, yeah, one of the first yeah, ones. Yeah, amongst my mother's uh, Beatles albums that I stole. So, um, but yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of the first record I ever bought. I think it was. It was either the Star Wars soundtrack. I think I went to the record store. We went to Licorice Pizza, by the way. That oh, was nice. The, that's the store we used to go to. Um, yes. So I bought the Star Wars soundtrack, and I bought, I think, an Eagles album, and I bought like a, what else did I buy? I don't know. There's a couple of them. Maybe a, a Foreigner. I don't remember. But that was like popular, you know, that was the pop music of my day. But uh, yeah, I think Eagles, The Long Run, and maybe Hotel California. I can't remember which one. But uh, but definitely the Star Wars soundtrack was one of my first albums. <laughs> and now I have, now I still have them. And I was, still work. I was uh, a snob for a period of time because people were like, oh, the the soundtrack is out for this movie like back in the 80s. And I took a look at it. I'm like, it's all the songs. Where's the score? Where's the score release, right? And right, it's like, yeah. Oh, this is just a bunch of rock songs. I don't care about that. I want the score. Where, where, are, the, where are the cues, man? I'm yeah, cues. exactly. So no, I, I well now they do both. Now they do the yeah. you know the score yeah. and the songs. Like if it's a James Gunn movie, of course you get the of course. The, yeah. Although one of my favorite music composers right now is Junkie XL. I don't know why I love the soundtrack, the score from Mad Max Fury Road. I think that's fucking He's awesome. He's really good. Uh, yeah, that's one of my favorites. I don't know why. I was always John Williams, uh, Jerry Goldsmith, oh, sure. and James Horner fan, but lately I would say like Thomas Newman. Um, yeah. He Michael, did. Michael Giacchino. Yeah, and, and yeah. you know Hans Zimmer is okay. He seems to be a little repetitious sometimes, but Junkie XL, I agree, does some really dynamic yeah. uh, scores. So did Hans Zimmer did the Dune movie, right? Yes, he did. Okay, and I thought he did, which I really and, liked. But and I agree with you that a lot of them become like this James Horner, in particular, seems derivative of James Horner. Yeah, I know. Movie. Yes. It's like I've heard that score for like ten other films, James. Come on, dude. Yes, exactly. Uh, oh, and, and Danny Elfman. I can't forget Danny Elfman, by the way. Too, oh, which I yes. Love. Yeah, um, which is also one of, in, in, yeah. in one of my favorite bands of all time, Ungo Boingo. Yeah. But uh, that's I, 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 we're talking about music again for some reason. But I think Ungo Boingo is probably the band I've seen the most live, which is a weird, oh nice, okay. which is a weird flex, I know. But that's uh, cool. It's just yeah. I, I've, I think I've seen them like twelve times, maybe. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> After that, excuse me. After that long detour through music history, um, why the last man? So, <laughs> when last we left, why the last man? <laughs> you, Previously you I, on the flick cast, <laughs> you and I were discussing whether we thought it would get another season and what would happen and how the show is not necessarily fulfilling its promise or yes. living up to its potential. Uh, I guess Hulu and FX agree with us. I don't know. <laughs> Was it because was it an hour after we recorded that episode that you? Uh, I, think, I think it was about an hour. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, look what happened. So I, I listen. Yeah. It's hard enough to get any show on the air. It's it's almost yes. impossible. The odds of getting a show and look at how long it took. Why the last man to get going? It took what ten yes. years to get it to, to, to the air, to the TV. And so I and I feel bad for the showrunner. I feel bad for Leslie Clark. I feel bad for the crew, especially in the cast. Because the cast will probably work again most of the time, I would imagine. Diane Lane's going to get another job, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, of course. So um, I feel bad for the crew who have to figure out what to do and hustle because they're like, oh, this is going to go a long time. This is like, you know, <laughs> this is a great show. So I, I, I'm sympathetic to all that. But that doesn't make up for the fact that the show wasn't terrific. And yes. I, I mean, Hulu doesn't release numbers, so we don't know. But I got to think that it wasn't being watched by too many people, which is one of the reasons. But I just, you know. I feel bad, but it's not coming back. They canceled it, so there you go. Well, apparently money is coming into it as well because it was uh, very expensive uh, to do just the pilot because they recast, uh, I think, a couple of times various roles and had to reshoot stuff. Um, but I, apparently, from what I understand, even even the pitch for the second season, when they figured it out, uh, it was already going to be a lot of money. So that, uh, you know, again, like you said, if the numbers had been stellar, they probably said, yeah, we'll take a risk and spend that. But um, I don't, 
I don't think they were. And yeah, you know, l listen, I, I, I'm the same with you. Anytime, any show, even if it's a show that I'm like, well, that's the dumbest show ever. Anytime it gets canceled, my, honestly, my first thought is like, man, that sucks for the crew because they're just like, they're, they're the laborers and they're the ones that make everything happen. And, um, you know, it, it isn't, as you well know, it isn't always uh, easy to get that next gig. So it's like, man, they had a steady gig and now they got to scramble and find other work. And, you know, some of them probably don't have that difficult a time. But yeah, that that's usually my first thought in these matters. And so I, I never want to put anyone out of work, but the show just, like we said, wasn't living up to the potential and just wasn't wasn't really good in my, my opinion. And uh, I'll say, I'm glad we're not talking about this week because I haven't even watched the latest episode yet. And it was, I just, I, I don't know that I will even finish the season at this point. Uh, and I know I, I that. Think, I think I will just for curiosity's sake, because. Yeah. After, Maybe I will after, eventually, but. After she and after Eliza Clark, the, the showrunner and executive producer announced that the show wasn't coming back on Hulu or on FX, she said, but you should watch the last few episodes because you know, we were going out with a bang or whatever. So I'm yeah. curious to see what they were building to. I will definitely, I am curious and I will definitely watch. Uh, I'll eventually watch it. At some point. Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't, that's the thing. It wasn't compelling. It wasn't like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. It's like Foundation. I was like, what's going to happen next week? I will wait right. for that show. Yes. Or, you know, Only Murders in the Building, which we haven't talked about at all, which is an amazing show. Yes. Um, I was like, well, I got to, when is this coming out? It wasn't that, it wasn't that for me. And it could have, been so much better and it just yeah. wasn't and i don't know where the where the fault lies if there's any fault or or where the where the thing broke down i don't know but you have this deep sort of font of information and story and characterization and whatever with the comics and you could draw upon that yes. a lot but yeah obviously you have to mix it up a little bit for tv but it's just you know they just it just didn't hit for me it didn't land and and i don't know why exactly and maybe it was partially what we were talking about last time where they were more concerned or seemingly more concerned with the message and 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 that kind of stuff than the story right but i don't know it just didn't work for me and a lot of the actors didn't really do a great job in my opinion the guy they had for york I, he never he never clicked for me yeah and uh in fact most of the actors didn't really click for me even I mean, Diane Lane is is great. Always, she did at first, but Diane Lane eventually was just like, yeah. Well, it's bad uh, writing. It's just her character yeah. is so is, was written so poorly, and she had so little to work with. And maybe she sensed it too. It's like, what am I? Why am I doing this? You know, because her right. her performance is like almost like, am, am I really saying this? In some ways, I I, I don't know. Yeah. And and yeah, it's just. I know they're saying they're trying to find a new home for it, but I just I kind of don't see anybody else picking it up. But we'll see. Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know. From what I hear, it's HBO Max probably. But uh, uh, well, you know, that's maybe the, that's maybe, the scuttle. That's the scuttlebutt. Whatever. Maybe HBO Max will say, "Yeah, we'll take it on." And what's your pitch for the second season? And they'll say, "You know, maybe we should do this." I don't know. I, it's we'll see. That, I mean, they'll, uh, they'll be like, "We like that, except everything about that we don't like." <laughs> Yeah, well, we like that. We'll buy it, but just change everything that you just, just said. Just change everything you just said. Yeah, we like. Here's there's one thing I don't like about what you just said, and the one thing I don't like is everything you just said. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So we'll That's see. My, we'll see if it finds yeah, a new uh, home, but you know, uh, maybe it won't. And maybe and the, the sad thing is now that it'll never get, it, it probably never get another chance because no. now it's like poison IP. No one wants to touch it. Right. But you know, it's got to be. I, I agree. It's got to be difficult and costly to make a show about an apocalypse uh, you know and the fact that you 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 kind of touched on it too it it's it's almost impossible to make a show like that that's not like the walking dead you know because people right. are like where are the zombies going to come out there's no zombies in the show fuck this show <laughs> exactly so and maybe it's just it came out at the wrong time no one wants to see a show about people dying and it's just you know it's hard to launch a an apocalypse show during an apocalypse but again as we've said many times no one sets out to and I've said this to other people. No one, no. no one hate makes anything, and no one sets out to make anything that's bad. Sometimes it just doesn't all come together for whatever reason. It doesn't, um, it doesn't click. Yeah, this is kind I, of yeah, the I, yeah. the argument I've had with people about you know the Star Wars movies and stuff like that. I'm like, because they're like, oh, they don't care about Star Wars. I'm like, I assure you, they do, and most assuredly, they care about the movie they're making. Nobody gets. Uh, a whole crew of a hundred people or so to sit there and go, yeah, let's make this suck. And we, we want to piss people off. It's like, mm, no, that doesn't really happen. But well, 
I would know. say that J.J. Abrams cares about money. And, right, and exactly. They care, Disney cares, well, ultimately it's a business, and FX right. and Hulu is a, is a business. And, yes. and of course, let's let's be conspiracy theorists for a second, as other people have speculated. Sure. Like, well, FX, that's a Fox show uh, network, so Fox doesn't like shows about, you know, <laughs> LGBTQ people and, right, and, right. and r- trans rights and equality and representation. So the show got killed because of that. And I mean, I don't know what happened. I wasn't in the meeting that decided the show wasn't going to go on. But well, um, I mean, they weren't, they didn't hide the fact of what they were going to do. So if, right. if it was true about the network, it wouldn't have been on the air to begin with. <laughs> so right, they would, they would have said no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're going to pass on that. Yeah, so, they would just pass them. And so, uh, maybe, yeah. although, as you know, um, network executives, quote unquote, let's use that catch all term, sure, they don't sure. always know what they want. And they also don't know that they don't like something until they see it. Sure. And like, I don't know what this is, but I know I don't like it. So who knows? Again, I wasn't in that meeting. I don't, I'm not privy to those discussions, as most people aren't. But whatever the reason, if it's economics or if it's they don't like the show or if it was just show was just bad. I hate to say the show was just bad because that makes me feel bad for the creators of the show and the people right. making it. So it, it just didn't I mean, it just didn't it come did, together, I don't think. It did, but yeah, my favorite phrase, it just didn't land. It just didn't yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, for whatever reason, it just didn't work. It didn't click. It didn't come together. Network so, execs. I always love that generic term. Just like Hollywood. Like there's yeah. there's a the the neighborhood in Hollywood makes everything that you ever see. It's like ah, come on, all right. Well, whatever. it's easier. It's easier than actually the movie you know, industry saying <laughs> I mean, saying something that makes sense because that's right. easy to lump it all together. It's like Hollywood right. is a is a devoid of ideas. Hollywood is this. Hollywood is that. <laughs> right. There's like Net- eight, eight people in Hollywood that make and yeah. write everything. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's the it's the gay mafia that runs everything in Hollywood. Yeah, right? that's it. Yeah. So. It used so. to be the Jews, but now it switched over to the. Well, Canada. they're also yeah. Jewish too, so it's like a it's worse. And some of them are trans, so it's like the worst wow. possible situation. I mean, yeah. geez, no wonder we can't get. No anything wonder everything. No wonder everything is terrible shit and, yeah. and derivative. <laughs> so we're obviously uh, joking. People. Yes, That's, yes. They're not all gay. No. All right. So. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Anyway. Uh, well, we should get to Dune, huh? <laughs> maybe. I guess. Whatever. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's all we can say about why. I hope yeah. it finds a home. I, I kind of hope it finds a home, and maybe if it goes to HBO Max, it'll be a different kind of show. Um, but is it too late to recast the lead? Is it too late to recast Yorick? I don't know. Maybe. Right. But, uh, I think the other guy would have been better. But he's gonna do. He's gonna be uh, Adam Warlock, right, or something? Like yes. That. Warlock, yes. Is that right? He is Adam Warlock in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. So good for him. Yeah. Um, I I don't know him. I don't know his work. No. Okay. Uh, all right, so fine. Denis Villeneuve. Uh, Villeneuve? I don't... Listen, I'm just going to say right now, I wish I'd seen this movie in the theater. This is the first time when I was yeah. like, fuck, why didn't I go to the theater? I felt terrible. I mean, I have a decent-sized TV, but it was not the same. And I do have a decent surround system. I do have, you know, some people were were posting like, oh, you won't, you know, you can't really tell what's happening, in the, especially in the finale when it's all shot at 20%. I'm like, dude, my TV was no problem seeing that. I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, believe me, we can see it. It'll be I know how to adjust my shit, so. <laughs> but not every, not everybody does, obviously. True, but true. I'm, there's, I don't think I have any negative things to say about Dune the movie I, I was trying to think of I'm, I'm not trying to think of something but it's like usually when you watch something like oh this is amazing except for that thing that bothered me yeah, if they did this I, one part different maybe but no i yeah I, okay i take it back there's one thing that bothered me. <laughs> okay i don't know it, it's just i'm watching it and i'm loving it it's fucking visually beautiful and the sound is amazing and the, and the actors are amazing everyone is like it's it's such a loving you talk about someone who loves Something fucking Dennis Danny Newell that he loves Dune. Yes. I mean, he fucking loves it, and he's been living this movie dream for his entire life. He, I mean, I saw an interview where he like read Doom when he was a kid, like I did. It's right. like I've been thinking about this movie my entire life, and I can see that. Yes. The, the attention to detail and the stuff that he had to leave out totally makes sense for the most part. Uh, I kind of feel like I would have liked to see more about the Benny Gesserit a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. By the way, this is total spoilers. spoilers for the- yes. For a movie based on a book that came out in 1968, so you <laughs> and should has had another movie and a mini and has already had now. another movie and like mini series. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fine. Anyway, there's a scene where, when when the 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 judge of the change or whatever comes to to give Leto and the Atreides the, the Arrakis is like the Duke and the the Emperor blah blah blah, and he puts his signet ring on the wax. He's like, oh, oh, so it's done now. I'm like, that's fucking Poe Dameron. Why is he there? Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. You know okay. I, you, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, when, yeah. do you talk first? Do I talk first? It's like, okay, I get it, Oscar Isaac. You like jokes. But that took me out of the movie for a second. And that sucks for me because I'm an idiot. But obviously that one thing, I'm like, it's not a time for jokes. Leto is not a joker. <laughs> you know they, what I mean? Do they you, relax Leto a little bit more in this one. For he's, sure. He's less uptight. Yeah. But yeah. not really. I mean, there's definitely, yeah. I mean, look. Lido's only job is to die, basically. So right, right. For, for the father, nothing, right? It's like, you know, yes. you're going to die, and you're going to be my, you know. And here's the other thing that I wish I would have had, and I'm sure in the longer director's cut, there's probably more with with the doctor, too, because you don't get much about Dr. Yui. All of a sudden, he's a, tr- spoiler, he's a traitor, right? Right, right. You don't get much development. He, I mean, he basically tells him, you know, I made the deal with the Baron for my wife to save her. But, I mean, maybe that's enough. I don't know. But he has a lot more backstory. And yes. you don't get the idea. You don't understand that how hard it was. Because don't, they don't talk about Imperial conditioning. They don't talk about any of that stuff. I mean, he's got the, the mark of Imperial conditioning where he's totally trustworthy. Right. The fact that Piter broke his Imperial conditioning is a huge deal. Because no one's ever been able to do that before. Exactly. So, so that never... That never gets mentioned. He's just a traitor, which I guess maybe it doesn't matter. But there's a lot of things like the Bene Gesserit that don't really come out much uh, to how much they've been manipulating bloodlines for thousands of years to try to make the quiz outside Iraq and all this. I mean, again, that's a lot of deep backstory shit that maybe you don't need. And I'm sure that it was like, oh, we have to make this movie accessible for people who've never sure. read the book. Sure, yeah, exactly. So anyway, I, I but I loved it. And I cannot, I, there better fucking be a part two. That's all I can say. I think... Um... I'm like you that the only negative I have for this is that I wanted more. <laughs> and that's, I think that's a good negative to have that I yeah, want to definitely. see more. I, I like the fact though, that it didn't, um, it's accessible to people, but it didn't like, well, as you know, the Benny Gesserit, blah, 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 there's no like explanation or overly long explanations on things. It was like, this is the world we're in and you just got to go with it. And I thought that was really great. Um, but I just, yeah, I don't think there was a wasted moment. I don't think there was any part that I was just like, Oh, come on, let's get past this. Or, uh, what's this? No, it was, um, I, yeah, I, and I, I've been a I've been a fan of his stuff. All I've seen is his um, I think his English language movies from Sicario forward, um, and I've loved all of them. Sicario, Arrival, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and this are just amazing. It's it's kind of like one of those things. Like uh, this guy obviously obviously loves making movies and telling stories, and that's great. Um, and I'm not to say that uh, not saying that other directors don't, but I think he's he's one of those at the level like Ridley Scott and some others that are uh, artists, really. I mean, you know, there's like you said earlier, it's a business, and you you are, as a director you have a function. But I think there are ones that elevate uh, the story and what you see. I don't know. I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but this is just a amazing. Yeah, it's, it's art. It's an yeah. art. It's art. It's basically a two hundred million dollar art film. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, but it sounds like the head of HBO is pretty confident there's going to be a part two, and he actually is now saying he wants it to be a trilogy, um, not just so the you know the first book in the first two movies, and then uh, was it Children of Dune or Chapter House Dune, whatever, the yeah. second book uh, as the third movie, but. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like uh, I don't think I'm alone in this. I feel like after Dune, they kind of go downhill a little bit. The books, yeah, yeah. So I'd be fine with just two movies about Dune. That would be okay at this yeah. at this level. Um, but you know what? That's fine. Make more, and they're making a Benny Gesserit TV show. So I guess that's yeah, uh, that's, that's where you're getting kinda, your backstory. So. The high school years, you know. <laughs> the high school years, yes. Hello, fellow kids. Benny Jesser at 90210. <laughs> uh, 90210. Yeah, exactly. That's funny. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I just, there wasn't, people are talking, some people are like complaining, oh, it's too slow, it's like nothing really happened, it's like, you know, the, it's beautiful but mired in sand, people love that, like, analogy, oh, of, yes. analogy of like, yes. oh, it's in, the whole thing is in sand, like, it's so slow, I mean, it, you know, people said the same thing about, I remember seeing, like, people complaining about the movie Unforgiven, for example, with right. the Clint Eastwood movies, like, oh, it's just, it's too slow, it's like, yeah, shit, sometimes shit unfolds, you know, right. he's not from the MTV quick cuts Michael Bay bullshit where there's 40 cuts in a scene instead of two you know he likes to, <laughs> right. let, shit, he likes to let he likes to let shit play out it's more like a play in some ways yes um, I just yeah I just 
you know, I, I don't know what it is, but there was like some parts of me were like, wow, there's a lot of Jason Momoa in this too. And he's and great. He was really good. I mean, he was still Jason he Momoa, was. but he wasn't, wow. he was different. And it's like, he's wow. the most Jason Momoa of any Jason Momoa. Yeah. yeah. But he did some, I don't know. He did great in this. And as you know, obviously a lot of that has to do with the director and things like that. But yeah. Um, but I, I mean, Duncan, Duncan Idaho is an important character in the Dune yes. world. Uh, I, I think Gurney is important too, and I feel like Gurney didn't wasn't as developed as he could have been too, because Gurney's more of a. Although, although Paul to say, "Give us a song instead." That's the only time you ever hear him even talk about. He's have his ballast set, which he's always got with him. Apparently, yes. But, uh, yes. But yeah, you can't have maybe maybe Josh Brolin's like I'm not going to sing a song like that. But he does do some poetry, so you know, or whatever. He's got his little book of poems. But we should so. be able to see Gurney in part two. Oh sure, yeah. not well, so much Duncan, but you know. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe later. But Duncan, um, yeah, if we do some of the other books, we get Duncan I'd hope the second or whatever. <laughs> but um, the goal yeah, I mean, Gooner, Gooney, Gurney, Goonies. <laughs> I always say Goonie. Yes, yeah, so, well, that makes sense because well, Goonies. that's yeah, exactly. <laughs> you will definitely see Gurney again uh, yes. in the second movie because he's he figures in that one because uh, he doesn't die. Obviously, he's like attacking the Harkonnens and the and the Sardukar, which also were amazing. I'm glad we got to go to. The Sardukar planet. Yeah, Mars. that that was cool. Those guys are creepy as fuck. But yeah, they are. <laughs> they they were good. They were good. I mean, yeah. I just you were talking about people who no one goes out to make a bad movie like J.J. Abrams making Star Wars and stuff. I don't feel that J.J. Abrams has the same level of love and affection and oh, reverence, no. if you will, for the Star no. Wars franchise that Denis Villeneuve has for fucking Dune. Yeah, he again loves this movie, loves this book, and made uh, it's not a masterpiece, but it's. It's uh, it's like we said. It's an art movie that also has a two hundred million dollar budget. It's just super cool. And I just the thing that I always lo- I always loved about something like Dune is that it's the future, yet they still use swords and stuff, which I always yeah. think is cool. Yes. Um, so, but if anybody watches this and they go, "Wow, they totally ripped off Star Wars," it's kind of funny. But, uh, <laughs> That's always funny. It's like, oh yeah, sure they did. Right. Th- those Benny Jesuits are like those are like Jedi man. It's like right. they have the they have the voice. It's like the Jedi mind trick. You know, I'm like, it's like no, oh, they no. have it entirely set in Tatooine. What the hell? You know? No man, it's the other way, bro. Yeah. yeah no, now we just seeing it all laid out like this. You're like, wow, George Lucas really borrowed from I movie. know right it's like wow I, I, you forget how much Star Wars is, especially the first movie is a lot like Dune it's yes. a lot so I will I will say going into this my biggest concern and I didn't really have a lot of concerns but my biggest concern was how well Timothy Chalamet was going to do and he just Chalamet Chalamet he was amazing and everybody was but I was like okay within yeah, he... even that just that first scene I was like all right, no, no more concerns. He's got this. So. He's, like, he's like a whiny kid, a little bit. He's like, Mom, I just woke up. I don't want to do the voice right now. Just give me the water. Yeah. <laughs> don't make me do funny. the Jedi mind tricks, man. Come on. Yeah, I thought their dynamic was great. And she, yeah. uh, Je- Je- Rebecca Ferguson, was awesome as Jessica. I thought she yeah. did a great job. Um, no no disrespect to Francisca Annis, who also did a great job as Jessica, I think, yes. too, in, the, in the David Absolutely. Lynch movie. She was one of the high points in the David Lynch film, I think. But uh, yes. you can't you can't watch this and not compare it to the Lynch movie. Uh, they're obviously great, vastly different, but it's the same similar story. The other thing I noticed that was interesting is there's no fade Ruatha in this movie at all. No. Yeah. He gets, I was like, I think, he got, I think he got I think he got cut because that was one of the things that they were talking about how you, you had to let some characters get pushed to the side a little bit because he wanted to focus more on Paul's story, which I get the feeling yeah. that that's, that's the narrative, you know, thrust of this thing is that what happens to Paul, he becomes the, the, the Lisa Nagaev and all that stuff. And, and so some characters, you don't have time to develop. Why does the Baron have two nephews and why does Fade come in, in the middle of the movie yeah. and do stuff? So Raban was fine. If I can Dave Batista, man, yeah, you can give all the fade stuff to Raban, and I think it works. Just well, fine. I think in the second so. movie that that's what will happen. I think yeah. that uh, that yeah. Raban will be the unless fade comes in the second movie. I don't know, but uh, yeah, never seen, we never to. seen. The other thing I've noticed too, and, and and I think I read this also, but before I read it, I noticed it in the movies that the Baron doesn't really talk that much. Yes, because in the in the book, if you recall, the Baron's like blah 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 blah. I will talk about my plans. He I will, monologues like he's nobody's like, he's like a Bond villain or something. Yeah, exactly. But it's, but in this, he's like a man of few words. I you know I will rise from the oil, so you know that this is a metaphor for oil. <laughs> man, Skarsgård made him completely creepy, though. He did a great oh, job. Man. Yeah, he's great. He's really great. <laughs> it's like whoa, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just 
it's been enough time since I've seen the David Lynch and Dune. I haven't seen it probably in a year or so, but I do go back and watch it occasionally. But because uh, at that point, it was in my mind the definitive sort of version of the movie of the book, even though it's you know hardly anything like the book at all, and right. in my opinion, needlessly Lynchian. But, right, uh, right. But this is uh, this is just it's just so good, and I don't know a how you'd ever make another one that's this good and how will you make a sequel that's as good i can't imagine that the second movie will be as good but maybe hopefully it will be but you're right i had i had i had very i was not concerned but i was like you can't possibly well i was worried that it wouldn't live up to the hype that i had built up in my mind but also the hype from the director saying how it's this and how angry he was that people weren't going to watch it in the theaters but now i get it it's like this should be in the theater if any movie that has come out recently should have been watched in a theater. It's this one. Yeah. Like James Bond. I don't, I think you can watch on a big screen TV and get everything, but this one has the, I hate to use uh, it kind of in the back of my mind. Now I've nailed what it sort of reminded me of. And maybe it's because of the setting, but it, it reminded me of the old school epics like Lawrence of Arabia, which is, you know, very oh, similar sure. with sand and, uh, Middle Eastern influences and stuff, but it was, it had that sweeping epic vibe that I don't think has been done in a long time. Right. I mean, maybe Dances with Wolves is probably the last one movie that I remember that has been that kind of a sweeping epic. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I actually, yeah, as I was watching, I'm like, wow, he's really like you. You watch a lot of movies. Like we, I made fun of Michael Bay for a second before, but it's like Michael Bay loves to cut. He loves cuts. He loves, yes, he, yeah. he builds action by cutting any scene. That he wants to speed up, he'll cut forty times to a guy like I remember, like in uh, in in The Rock, where they go and rob that place to steal the weapons. It's like twenty cuts where they cut the lock off the thing. It's like cut, 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 cut. Anyway, yeah. and they got to spray the thing, and they do this. It, you know, the fr- it's like ten frames of, of a shot or something. Right, right. But but like like David Lean and like you know Lawrence of Arabia, that's an exact great comparison because Lean had these giant wide vistas. He let shit play in the huge wide shot. And and, and in this movie he does the same thing. Like a lot of yeah. the fight stuff is in one wide master. Yeah, or you pan and, across to show yeah. the the a massive uh you know scenery and stuff like that and that's yeah. what I felt like he did here. You're right. It wasn't these quick cuts and uh even, not... even in the even the fight scenes yeah were like low wide masters a lot of times he didn't yeah. cut into them much he's not a, he's not an editor like that he's not a guy who likes a lot of cuts yeah especially so you... in something like this so and, and what's cool too is in in a lot of these wides during the fight for example when the harkonnens come to and the sardaukar come to come to arakeen there's the whole shot where the where the trees are going and then the other guys are coming and there's like explosions and there's like effects going on there's you yeah. know, all the cg and it's like one shot yeah and that's that's kind of ballsy in a way because you know if you as you know if you linger on effect shots too long sometimes they break down people are like oh that's fake yeah. obviously it's fake cuz there's, there's no fucking spaceship sitting there but it's just it was i mean granted it was a little it was at night so that helped sure. but it, it it's just that kind of thing, you're absolutely right. It's it reminded me of the sequence. I can't remember Aqaba, maybe in Lawrence of Arabia, where they they, they start they're on the hill, and yeah. and Lawrence's troops just come in and they sweep through the entire town all the way to the water where yeah, the guns are. Exactly like one fucking shot, man. It's like, yes. Can you imagine the logistics? If no one's if you haven't seen Lawrence of Arabia, by the way, you gotta fucking see that movie. But absolutely, it's a they, beautiful they, they movie. Just, they just sweep in. And with Sharif's troops and the, the, all the guys on horseback, they go right through the town. All the camels, they just keep going all the way to the to the ocean to the yeah. to the sea where the guns are. It's like one shot. It's a beautiful, and that reminded me of that when I was watching this. And obviously, yes, I'm sure he would be the first to admit that you know David Lean Lawrence of Arabia is, an, is definitely an influence. influence. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. how can it not be, right? And I, you know, and I've seen Lawrence of Arabia in 70 millimeter. Um, this is a kind of movie I'd like to watch in IMAX. But I was just wondering if. If uh, IMAX has enough runtime, because I thought IMAX was, I'm I pretty thought sure the so runtime is. So the whole movie can't be in IMAX then. I, I would think not. That's that puzzled me because they're like, oh, the whole movie is shot in IMAX. I'm like, but how? How does that? It, it work? can't be. It can't be because IMAX is like two hours and twenty minutes or something, or two and a half hours. I, this is more than that. So I imagine yeah. it's a combo of things where, you know, the epic shots are IMAX. Yeah. But, but I would up-res? like to see did it. They, did, they, uh, did they up res? I mean, because I imagine he shot on film, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I imagine. So, 
you, you've got an IMAX camera going at the same time or, or something? Because IMAX cameras are also loud, too. So I don't know. Yeah. I'd be curious to see it. But now that I've seen the movie, I've, I've already watched it three times. That's how much of a nerd I am. <laughs> I've watched it twice. I haven't, uh, but I will I, be, I, I plan to watch it at least one more time this weekend. I was, I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to watch it uh, about a week ago before it came out. Right, right. And so I, I watched it then, then I watched it a couple more times, and then or one more time on that, and then one time on HBO Max to see if there's any differences. And I did notice one difference. Some of the subtitles were slightly different in the HBO Max version than the version I watched, which I don't know uh, what that means. Yeah. Um, like there's a thing where when Stilgar it comes to, to meet Leto for the first time, <laughs> Yes. He, uh, by the way, love Javier Bardem. By the well, way, he he's was amazing as still fucking. Guy. That was great. great, and he's he's great. And people are like, oh, there's no humor in this movie. I mean, Javier Bardem is the fucking comedy relief of this movie. Absolutely, basically. yes. <laughs> and so he's like, he says something to Paul. It's like I recognize you, or or something. Yeah. But in the version I saw, it said I know who you are. But in the HBO Max version, he says I recognize you, or it's uh, the other way around. I forget. So okay. it's slightly different. Um, and then Dr. Kynes is like he will know your ways as if born to them. He, she says that in, which is what she says in the book, but, or he says it in the book cause they gender swap oh, yeah. that character, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. Um, that, I don't think that he, she could do the exact same thing that, that, that kinds does in the book and be a woman. It's even the, even the reveal, if they get to that in the second movie, uh, you know, the big, the big sort of yes. secret. Yes. It, she could be a woman. It doesn't matter. Right. right. Um, but she says he. She doesn't say that in the version I saw. She says something slightly different, which I thought was interesting. But anyway, whatever. It's uh, it's neither here nor there. Uh, I doubt they changed the subtitles at the last second. So maybe mine are just wrong. I don't know. But yeah, maybe it was whoever. Yeah, yeah. Whoever type whoever typed them in. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, God, I want to get through this and get to lunch. Can't, so can't translate Fremen as well as uh, <laughs> they as, as they should be. Go back to Fremen so, school. Go so. back to Fremen school. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I liked her. I thought she was really good as, as Dr. Kynes. Yeah, as she was great. As yes. Liette. Yes, <laughs> I yes. Couldn't, I couldn't help thinking though, I've forgotten uh, something about the book. It's like moisture is so important. It's like she's like, okay, do the coffee service. And I'm like, okay, they're gonna spit in the coffee. I totally forgot about that. But they right. did. I'm like, oh, yeah. they're 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 making the coffee with their own spit. Of course they are. Of course they are. So, yes. So how's that how's that saliva taste, Paul? <laughs> Well, I mean, every, they, they never they never get to drink it, so it doesn't matter. But everything about them, I mean, they're like the still suits and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> it's yeah. like it's all it's all recycled. But no, that was just never one drop of rain on Arrakis. Yeah, I just, I detail, loved it on the first detail. View, yeah, yeah, I loved it on the first viewing, and it, my estimation keeps going up every time I watch it. So yeah, I was like you said, I was worried about a little bit about Shamale. Yeah, but although although I was less worried, did you, you didn't see that movie Little Women. The re, the remake. I didn't. No. Okay. No. He was really good in that, and I was like, uh, you know what? He and Florence Pugh had some pretty good scenes actually in that, and I was like, you know what? He's going to be okay as Paul because Paul's kind of a little, you know, a little shit maybe a kind of bit. Yeah. At the beginning, like the scene with him and the Gam Jabbar and 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 the Reverend Mother, he's like, you know. How dare you use the you know? Yeah, <laughs> he was kind of he was kind of a dick and a little a little prat, whatever you want to call it. But then after that, he's like, oh yeah, I get it, I get it. So he evolves. He definitely evolves, but he still doesn't know everything. Like even even Doctor Kime says, you know, you're just a boy hiding in a hole, basically, which is true. <laughs> yeah. But they talk about that for a second because that's people forget if they haven't read the book or whatever, they don't realize what happens to Paul. It's like Paul and Chani don't end up together, folks. Sorry, nope. Yeah, I know. I mean, they, yeah. I mean, they, I mean, they kind of do, but not really, because he ends up marrying the duke's or the the emperor's yeah. daughter, right? So exactly, yes. Anyway, so. Princess Irulan. I wonder. So I think that it was a good place to break and stop for the second, because isn't there like some time goes by now, like a couple years or something like well, that? Which which is why it doesn't matter because they can people can age. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, they, so. when they go into the desert, his path. Although I don't remember Duncan being this far ahead in the book. I think he dies earlier in the book. If I remember, he dies in Arakeen. So yes. they brought him, they yeah. brought him along a little farther. Cause I'm sure they were watching the dailies. They're like, Momo is awesome. We got to bring him. Along more. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, um, yeah, I've been watching, uh, I, I follow Jason Momo on, on Instagram, of course, and on, uh, on YouTube, he's got his own YouTube channel, but he's like posting all these videos of him on the set and stuff. It's like, I, he's like, that's the kind of person that you want to work with probably because he's so excited. He's like a little kid yeah. almost. He's like yeah. so excited about being there. And like during the scene, they're like blocking the scene. He's got his guitar. He's like holding his guitar and stuff. It's like, he's probably really fun to work with. And he's like, I'm going to steal this setup for when I make a movie or whatever. So. <laughs> but I'm sure that people, 
I mean, it's also because, you know, I, and let me be cynical for a second. It's also because he's starring in Aquaman 2, which is a, oh, a, a sure. Warner Brothers Warner Brothers property, uh, you know. So, hey, can you figure him fe- feature him more prominently in this movie? So, although, yes. which would probably have been more useful like a year ago when this was supposed to come out. But, well, um, true, yeah. <laughs> but I wonder, I wonder if 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 they did any work on the movie in the last year. I wonder if you went back and re-edited or did anything. I thought I can't remember if it was Dune or something else, but there was there was some big movie that's coming out or has come out that they said, yeah, the pandemic allowed us to uh, really look at some things and do some work. I thought it was Dune, but maybe I'm misremembering. Was it Why the Last Man? Probably not. <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> so apparently, apparently not. Uh, so yeah, I'm sorry. I shouldn't make jokes about that. No, it's sad. I know. It's sad when shit's not great yeah. and it gets canceled. But um, yeah, I immediately I'm like, okay, like in the first five minutes, I'm like, we got to see number two. <clears throat> we got to see yeah. a second movie. It's just yeah. there's too much going on. And even as someone, I guess I can never approach this movie as someone who doesn't know the story. So I think a good experiment would be to show it to, you know, regular folks or people yes. who've never read the book uh, and see if they can get it. Because I feel like it definitely helps to have read the book. And because there's some things that maybe you wouldn't necessarily pick up on if you hadn't. But then maybe like, like again, I was talking about Dr. Yui. It's like maybe again, maybe it doesn't matter what his motivation is. He basically says it when he yeah you know, gives him I mean, the tooth i never so read maybe... the i never read the book uh, i still haven't read the book and i my points of reference are lynch's movie and how dare you even talk about it then i know and then the uh the miniseries on sci-fi but i you know i've done my research <laughs> i've done my own research <laughs> of course you have and looked into the story because uh both the versions i saw made me want to find out more about it um, so but not enough to read the actual source material though you lazy bastard no because everyone was like yeah if you like the visual spectacle spectacle you're probably gonna not like you the know book. dude that's why I said before do the audiobook then because okay. the guy who does the audiobook the reading is great and you definitely here's the thing about about Frank Herbert and especially about dune in particular it's a lot of inner monologue shit and a lot of like you know I'm gonna do drugs and trip out because the spice is you know make is a psychedelic right so there's right, a lot of trippy right. shit in the book which makes sense because it was the 60s. Um, but yeah, I, I would say get it get it read to you because I've read it a few times, but the last time was audio. And I, any audio book, in my opinion, a lot of times at least, is almost better than reading the book because I love people Sometimes, telling me a yeah. story. Yeah, It is for me, lately especially. I don't know why. I just love people telling me a story, especially if they're doing a really good job performing the book. Yes. And so I would say try that maybe. Um but yeah, I, well, that's interesting. Okay, so you you could follow everything, yeah, without having to know the deeper backstory because there's a lot of stuff in the in the book that you're gonna you're gonna understand the relationships of the characters more maybe than you would get from the Lynch version and for sure and maybe right, the miniseries. Right. I don't remember because they were like how many episodes was that eight or ten episodes? It was or? three, but they were like oh. feature feature length. I think they were like ninety minute episodes or something like that. So you can, you can get a lot more story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, I I felt like I knew everything that was going on and why people were doing and their connections. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think they, well, they kind of mentioned Jessica being his concubine and stuff like that. And I absolutely thought uh, that scene with them together where he's like, I should have married you. was like, just, well, I don't know. It was a lot of this stuff was just exceptionally no, they, well they, done and acted. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. And that scene, especially, yeah. well, that's something he says in the book too. He always says, I should have married you because he regrets Right, because he was he was as the head of a great house. He was waiting to marry for ev- for an advantage. That was his thing. He's like, I can't marry you because I need to marry the 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 emperor's wife or, or the daughter or something like that. But then he got too old. He's like, well, I should have married you. I guess you know, you, yeah, you're fine. And, even though and, even though you're kind of a whore, it's fine. No, I'm and I think they do a great job. And I don't know how it's done in the book, obviously, but in this version, especially just in the short time that we have, Leto, that they have some great scenes that show who it really is. Like when they're, you know, with the, the spice miner, you know, kinds is like, uh, Oh, there's too much spice on there. We got to do that. And he's like the hell with the spice. Let's get the people off there. And she gives him this look like, well, I didn't expect that from you. Well, they've uh, been dealing with the Harkonnens for 20 years. So yeah, right. They know. Right. So, so I just, who, uh, who would, who would not, 
and that's a thing that happens in the book too. It's like the the spice miners will not abandon the 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 ship, the the spice mining ship, because they will get killed by the Harkonnens if they give up all right, the spice. So. Right. So and the guys, I mean, they they kind of touch that in the movie a little bit. They won't get off and get into the thing. He's like, "Fuck the spice, dude! Get on get, the ship! Yeah, get on here so, now! Yeah, yeah." So, well, that's something that's, yeah. that that Stogar. That was a great scene between Stogar and Leto, which is in the yeah. book and and not in the Lynch version at all, because you don't meet Stogar until they go to the desert. But he comes in. It's like that's you know, uh, your your sieges are yours. I won't hunt you, etc. So that's very honorable. They they talk about honor a little bit, but Stogar and the Fremen are big on honor. That's a big yes. thing that comes up. Yes, and so. And that's why he said honor honor demands I'm somewhere else, which is true. And so it's like, you know, that that's a good scene between them that establishes the dynamic because this maybe this guy is different. And Stilgar even says it later, it's like I, I kind of liked his father. He seemed like an honorable man. Right. Um and that was a good part too, where Paul's never killed anybody and you know, he knows how to kill people, but he's never actually killed anybody. Right. And so it's a well, big deal to him. And that that's great too, because it shows how the Fremen are. It's like he just killed one of our people, but that now makes him one of us. <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> well, right. It's like, like Jamie says, it's like only the strong lead, right? So right. Uh, in some respects, it's still a kind of a sexist story in a way because Jessica beats Stilgar. So technically, she should be leading the Fredman at that point. Exactly, that right. <laughs> but she's she's a, 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 a sorceress or whatever. Uh, whatever he's, I can't remember. I'm totally forgetting the, the, the term they use. Um but she can't be a leader because she's like a, a, a you know a weirding woman or whatever. God, yeah, I can't remember yeah. the term. Anyway, um, a Sedina or something like that. Anyway, it's it shows she can't be in charge, and so Jamis is like, "Well, I won't. I don't recognize this bullshit, Stilgar. You got beaten, so right. I'll fight the I'll fight the boy." He's like, "I'll beat the boy." But yeah, Stilgar's like, what, "Is he toying with him? What's up? You know, why didn't you just kill him?" Exactly. They're, they're, yeah. Well, when when you die so easily in the desert, death is like matter of fact, right? It's like, ah, eh, right, shit happens. Yeah. So, but but they swoop in to pick up Jamis is, uh, and so they can save his water because Paul is now in possession of his water. They, I know they'll bring that up in the second movie, but technically right. Paul now owns the water of of that guy he killed. So. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh, yeah. I don't know. Anyway. It's just such a uh, we could go yeah. on and on because this is just beautiful, and I'd rather uh, wrap up the show so I can go watch it again. I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. If you haven't watched Dune, you should definitely watch it. Yes, um, and you should watch on the biggest screen you can. Uh, but be safe. Uh, yes. If you feel it's safe enough to go to the movies, then I would say definitely go and see it in the theater. It's worth it. I will see it in the theater as soon as I feel it's safe. Uh, I would imagine that they will either keep it in the theaters as long as they can or re-release it after yeah. after after this next round of vaccines for kids, which hopefully is coming soon. It sounds like it is, so that's great. I will definitely go to a theater and try to see all the other things that I haven't been able to see yet. Like I haven't seen, like we talked about, I haven't seen Shang-Chi yeah. and, or Bond, which is two things that I would definitely have gone to. And I'm not going to um, see Eternals. I'm not going to see theater, Eternals. But... I will, I will if my, if, you know, if there's a vaccine available for kids. Yes. Then, maybe I will. Yes. So. That's, that's when I will go back to the theater is when young that's kids That's when I'll feel more vaccinated. comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm not saying that it's not safe now. It probably would be. Um, yeah. You know, if you went on a Tuesday afternoon at the first showing and wore your mask the entire time, you'd probably be okay. But it's not worth it. It's not worth it to no. me. As much as I love movies, it's still not worth it to me to even take a chance. And that probably sounds super paranoid to some people, but I don't care. So, yeah, I don't care. All right, so Dune, amazing. Yes, uh, go see it a, now. Go see it now if you if you have it. Um, yeah. Picks. Let's pick something. Sure. Shall we? Or or should we just pick Dune and call it a day? I, I I'm know. okay with picking Dune because I'm I'm kind of in love. I mean, with I had that. a couple of things. I was gonna say one of my picks was go see you know watch Squid Game if you haven't watched Squid Game or watch Only Murders in the Building if you love yes. Steve Martin and Martin Short as I do and I know Joe does too. That is a great show. The whole season is now done on Hulu. You can watch the entire thing if you haven't been watching it. Uh, Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez, all fantastic in the show. Yes. Um, it's a funny Martin. I mean. Let's be honest. You and I talked about this before we started recording the main episode. It's like Martin Short has so many great lines. His delivery is amazing. I mean, he's a pro, obviously. He and Steve Martin play off each other great. But that said, as great as they are, Selena Gomez is no holds her own completely. Oh, and yeah, in some ways absolutely. surpasses them. Yeah, especially in the dramatic area, she's a great actor. I mean, yeah, I say actor because I don't like this actor actress thing. But no. okay, actress. She's a great actress. Whatever. Um, 
she does a great job. I'm so happy there's going to be a season two for that show too. So I think maybe dueling picks. I'll pick I'll pick only Murders in the Building, and you can pick Dune. And I'll still also say Dune is amazing. Too, I'll, I'll throw out as a, as a quick pick to kind of bring sure. things for, full circle back around. Go ahead. Um, uh, I was going to pick the new Duran Duran album, Future Past. So it's uh, oh there you go. It's a uh, if you're a Duran Duran fan, it will be nostalgic um, yet also forward thinking um but it's a it's a record of great music so you should check it out in the new duran duran album look at you future past record yeah. person i know it's okay you know what man lots of people listen to records still uh, records uh, as we talked about i think have surpassed the sale of cds so there you go <laughs> exactly also another dead format they've beaten those so there you go yeah does anybody do any people? I mean, does anybody even have a CD player? I mean, I do, but well, I'm weird. I, yeah, I don't think people. Certainly not in their cars. They just connect to their phone and play whatever service they have. So one of our cars has a CD player. One has Apple, whatever, Apple Connect, uh, or whatever, uh, so you can play your thing. Apple, I don't even know what it's called. Apple CarPlay or something. So yeah. Um. Anyway. All right, cool. So find the Flickcast at uh, theflickcast.com and find it at Spotify and Stitcher and Apple Podcasts, of course. Yes. And wherever you find your podcasts. Uh, and if you love the show as much as we do or even a tiny bit as much as we do, feel free to support it at patreon.com slash theflickcast. That's always appreciated. Thank you. And uh, find Joe and I on the socials at uh, what Joe writes, and I am at Chris Yu, which is, makes perfect sense, I guess. And, of course, the Flickcast is at the Flickcast. Yes. And so uh, that is all for me. Anything from you? I'm good. You're good. All right. So cool. <laughs> and uh, for Joe Dilworth, I am Chris Ulrich. That was the Flickcast. Thanks.